So the first one we'll do is this acorn boxes. Okay? Pretty simple. All right. So as one of the guys said that I saw on a, a, a YouTube for this, he said, still big enough for diamonds. <laughs> um, the, there are a couple of things that you, you'll notice as you go through with these. Um, one being that the tenon has to be pretty long. Now these were tighter than heck last week, okay? Because you're only suspending it from here and you don't want the bottom to be, yeah, and lose the diamonds and everything. So, um, but in this last week, they have loosened up uh, more than I expected because they were really tight. Maple and what? Maple and cherry. Okay. And that's hard and maple. Wagner. Yeah. So, there's a sequence to it as there is for most things, and the the nice thing is if. You know, you start with a piece of cherry like this. What you'll do is you'll turn a series of tops, tops um, to almost finish because you got to make a jam chuck to do the other side. All right, and so rather than making one part and it off, making a jam chuck, it's better just do three in a row. And this is what we had Marshall do last Friday at Safe Harbor. So it's possible for a brand new turner to do one of these. But pretty straightforward. So all I'm doing first is just going to rough this out. Now this is another, uh, to get this to a rough diameter, I'll take it after I drill it. I'll, I'll get it down to the size I want. Okay, but I know what I'm going to use to do the nut part, all right? And that's going to be a 7 8 inch hole. And since I want an 8 inch wall, that tells me that the Forstner bit I need to use is 1 and an 8 inch, okay? So that's pretty deep, okay, that's maybe three-eighths of an inch deep, but that, that'll be a pretty good tenon, I'll have a lot of grab on that. So this isn't very tough turning, because all I'm going to do now is round over the bottom. You know, you know what, I'm going to make those walls a little thinner, they're about I don't know, 3 sixteenths. I want to take it down a little bit. Because there's no, no sense making it heavier than it need be, you know? So now I'm going to round off and make a bead over on this side. Okay? And if I give myself a feel, So it's about that deep. So So before I take it any any more than that. I've got pretty much the shape, the general shape that I want up here, and uh, I can get the Wagner tool in 
from this side and get half of it. All right? I can get half of it neural. But because this is an embossing tool and not a cutting tool, you really have to press. So you can't take this as thin as you will be in the end. You'll just snap the sucker right off. So there I've got my knurling done on the bottom. All right. So now what I want to do is finish the cap and make a little stem. being in there with a, a spindle gouge getting in small, you can always do this with a parting tool, you know. Okay, so you get yourself a stem, you look at that, and you know, actually I have a, a break hard break here and I don't want it, no. which I should have fixed before I made the little stem. Now I'm going to part off the stem. And now I got to do the top. Actually, I'll give myself just a hair more real estate here. Move this out. There are two jam chucking procedures you do for this, this piece. Okay? We'll do this. We'll, we'll make a jam chuck so we can put this on, finish turning that shape that we want, and then knurl the whole top, and then that's, that's done. So let's, not good. <laughs> okay. So just like you do when you're making a box, you know, put a slight taper on it. So you you get it to slide on real loose like that, <laughs> just like you planned. <clears throat> Gosh darn! I'm really surprised because I was. Anybody have a towel? Right. Yeah. Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> no, take more than a Kleenex. Because this isn't, you know, really, really, really critical because all you're going to do is, is sand up that top a little bit and knurl it. And all the energy for the knurling is going this way. So that's not really a, a problem. When we do the nut and jam chuck that nut, that one you got to make tight. Okay, I'm going to sand it just a little bit. 
and then knurl it. For hardwoods, the narrower ones are softwood. But you will find that you get some different patterns depending on where you are. You'll, you can generate a spiral by being below center, the spiral turns one way, above center, spiral turns the other way. Dead on is the just dots. You need to oil them every once in a while. <laughs> well, it goes around. Oh, does it? <laughs> and you have to be careful about overlapping. You mess up the, the not pattern for, that you've done. Not for know. something like this. Okay. If you're trying to make a fine pattern, uh, a spiral or something, it's just like a spiraling tool. Mm -hmm. You want to. You can hear it when it engages. Don't press hard. It'll wander around a little bit and drop into the groove. So what I was doing when I was making these going out, I would cut three and then overlap it one or two and then do the next and rock it a little bit. <coughs> but when I come back from this side, I, could, I should probably just always go from here to here. But the reality is I like to be able to get close to the stem and so I like to do that first before I mess things up. So. Anyway, that's the cap. And we're done with the jam chuck. So now we go on to the nut part. And actually, this is quite straightforward. Um, he said, hoping everything works great. <laughs> um, because there was a trick. I, I, I saw another guy do a video, and I, there was a trick on it that I thought was really terrific. So I stole it. Well, they gave it to you because it was on the video. Yeah. All right, we'll do, we'll start this one off the same. Now, because that's a one and an eight, I got to be careful. I can't, I round this over, but I can't go less than a one and an eight inch. Now the nice thing I like about this one is that you've got this to fit it with. Alright? So once again, see I could do, I could actually make this the jam chuck. 
but you, you saw that you can sometimes have issues getting the jam chuck to fit and you keep cutting it off. <laughs> I don't want to cut off my nut. <laughs> the trick. First of all, I'm going to put another, another spot for a divot, or another, make another divot. And instead of drilling this with a drill, <laughs> I'm going to drill it with a rubber bit. And the reason I'm doing that is it's a rounded bottom, and I don't have to hollow anything. So this works. This works for all of your birdhouses too. Everybody that made flute should be familiar with this router bit. It's a 7 8 inch bit. You do have to clean it out more than you would a regular more than you would a regular drill, and you should hang on to the to the Jacob's cut. One more little push. So, now if I measure the, the depth, I'm in this far. So my bottom should be right there, all right? <laughs> so I'm going to mark that some. <laughs> and then, since that's a rounded bottom, I can come back pretty far before I start turning the bead. Now I'm going to give myself a little more room here. Uh, okay, that's really close to this step. I'm in the same position I was in the, the last time around, and that's, I need to work on the bottom. I need to work on the bottom, so I'm also going to create a jam chuck there. The other thing I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to, instead of making this absolutely straight, I'm going to bring this back a little bit so the nut's going to be shaped just with a, a little bit of a curve in it and then there'll be this straight pen in here. So I, instead of coming in with a jag and a straight down like this.
make another jam show. And if I use up all of that, I brought one hour in bed. <laughs> Because these are really long jaws, I, you know, I can just really hold it on quite a bit. So wood there. So now, that's pretty well held in there. And I'm going to make that little point at the bottom.